y'all welcome back to ramblin mama i'm lisa if you're new here and you're into deep dives on true crime please consider giving me a subscribe i think you'll like what you see okay so i've been waiting to watch this i didn't want to i've been saving it to watch it with y'all um this is madeline soto's mother's interview I, ha I see that there's like been a big dump of more information from this case. Uh, maybe even Stephen Stefan Stearns, his interview. So, um, but again, I've, I've been trying to not pay attention to it because I wanna watch this with fresh eyes. So this was uploaded by Hidden True Crime, a really solid, awesome channel. I'll link them below, go give them some love. And yeah, I'm going to try to get through in one fell swoop. So without any further ado, let's get into it. We currently have upwards, probably 200 people working on fire. Right, the Orange County Sheriff's Office is involved, the Kissing Police Department's involved, St. Cloud Police Department, Osceola County Sheriff's Office, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, FBI. Okay. Yes, what were your suspicious circumstances? So anybody who is somebody is involved yeah so regardless of the circumstances those people don't get to go home those people don't get to go back to their families those people don't get to live their lives to go back to their primary jobs of course i know the sheriff has probably expressed to you that's his number one priority i'm sure the casino police department's expressed that to you our detectives this isn't something that's going to stop or go away yeah right anybody who knows something anybody who may know something be brought into a room and we'll talk to whether they're guilty, whether they're innocent. Because our number one priority, our jobs so have kind of stopped. I mean, the other things we have going on until it's fine because that's the most important thing anybody has going on right now. But with that, a lot of people are going to feel that whatever happened, I can tell you, and I know detectives expressed to you that the thought process at this point is this is a homicide investigation. Yeah. Based on the evidence I've seen, based on the videos I've seen, I do believe. With that being said, and the reason I tell you that not to be an asshole is because the thought process with us leads it in a different investigation or different way. Meaning, whatever has already happened, right? We cannot change what happened most likely on Monday. We cannot change the fact that I believe Stephanie killed her, right? All we can do now is find her as quickly as possible. On the 2% the chance we're wrong and that she is alive, that's phenomenal, right? That's the best thing that could happen. On the chance that we are 100% correct and she has passed away, finding her now versus later will bring closure to your family, will bring closer to everybody, regardless of how it happened or why it happened. Meaning, if you have an inclination if you know where she's at, if his father knows, that doesn't mean those people get held accountable for what he did. It doesn't mean those people get held accountable for knowing what he did. It means we close out the investigation. You know what I mean? So a lot of times we go into rooms like this and we ask people questions. We say, hey, do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? And there's this fear of what happened already happened. I can't change that. So I'm not going to insert myself with knowledge because it's going to make me look bad. Regardless, at this point, I murdered her, right? He victimized her. He ruined her entire life from childhood until now. I think that there's probably some sense of guilt. And my fear is that sense of guilt is causing you to not want to assist in the location of her, not because you're a bad person, but because there's that sense of guilt that what was happening was happening under your roof. And now by her being found, brings that all to your plate and it doesn't. Oh no, if I knew anything, I would so tell you I wanted to you guys tell me you're suspicious but i still i'm not going to believe it until i have her body like, so there are things and the reason i say these things and again i'm not trying to be an asshole but the reason i say these things is there's a lot of things you've said and a lot of things i've kind of researched between fox 35 story 
between your initial statement to the police, a lot of things have changed. The initial statement to the police was you watched her get dragged, you watched her leave, you knew exactly what she was wearing. Can I can I tell you Absolutely. my thought process on yes, that or where I came from with that? I was handed this form and I'm like, where do I start? What do I write? And somebody say somebody said, Tell them what you saw. And so I started with I saw. And then I wrote out what I wrote out. But it wasn't until later I was like, wait, I didn't see her. I assumed that I saw her. I assumed that I heard her, but I didn't. In reality, I didn't see her. I only saw him and I heard something in the kitchen, but I don't know who that was. Which we've talked about today, but I guess my con there's other concerns. Right? Mm -hmm. You're nervous. You the police have showed you their hand. They said, Steph, let me want your phone. <laughs> Steph, let me want to talk to you. You're going to lock down your residence. You can't go back inside. Me? I don't care if it's the love of my life sitting next to me. I don't care if it's maternal grandma. If the police come and take my mom's phone and my son's disappearance, I'm not going to offer my mom a lawyer. That's nuts to me. That to me shows you prior. All right. I'm, I think I'm going to have a lot of trouble with this because it's so hard to not be emotionally involved in the content of what's going on. So maybe I should have watched it once before. I don't know. But briefly, some things that I'm noticing is you noticed in the beginning how she was like holding her legs almost, Jen. Um, we know she struggles with anxiety, so I think there's going to be a lot of self-soothing gestures that we're going to see throughout this interview, and it's going to be interesting to take a look at where those self-soothing gestures occur. Another in thing that I noticed was where she started breaking down. Uh, I thought it was going to be around her failure as a mother that's an obvious place for anyone who feels guilt, shame, remorse about that. Um, but instead, she was crying, talking about how she's not going to believe it until they come back to her with the body. And that's somewhat understandable, I guess, if someone is in denial. Um, and it's true that innocent parents will basically not believe until they lay eyes on the body. And even then, they're, uh, it's very difficult for them to believe it. But still worth noting that all of that emotion came at that point and not around any feelings of guilt or remorse yet. And also, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, it dies down pretty fast. Like, they talk about this on the behavior panel that, you know, a true emotional spike like that won't kind of um, rear its ugly head or whatever, like, and then dissipate like that. Like, a true emotional thing that overcomes you is usually a bit more sustained. Last thing I'll say about this guy, interview interviewer, um, I feel like what he's doing reminds me a lot of the dossier technique, and he even has this black book that he kind of keeps referencing, and Jen can't see in that book. She doesn't know what's in that book. And another part of what seems to be the dossier technique, perhaps, is, and this we saw in that Colonel Russell interview, which was masterful, um, that the interviewer is indicating how big this effort is and dropping names, right? FBI, local blah, 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 all these people working on it, and they're not going to go home until, and with the Colonel Russell Williams, uh, the dude was even citing how much money that meant because Russell Williams worked for the police department and had some understanding of this is the amount of budget that we're allocating to that. So I think that interviewer, who is brilliant, knew that that would speak directly to him. 
So this guy so far is really freaking good. And he seems to be really good at like not letting her off the hook. He doesn't really like react to that emotion that bubbles up in her. But at the same time, he keeps this very measured, fair tone in his questioning. Advertising stuff. Because at that point, you became more worried about him being falsely accused than any. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Whether or not that's what you felt, does that make sense? People having lawyers is their constitutional right. That is a thing that everybody has afforded. But for somebody who's going through what you were going through, to offer him a lawyer leads me to believe that there may have been a conversation, there may have been knowledge, or there may have been some inclination that you had, whether it be his involvement, her location, or something to where in your mind, there's guilt. Because you offering him a lawyer is very weird. I know. I know. I... That was still me under the assumption that... I think at one point... No, at one point you guys interviewed me, and when you guys showed me the picture of her, I believed the sexual stuff, but I didn't want to believe that he had done anything equal to her. I'm like, what if he did this stuff fine? But what if she's still missing out there? What if somebody took her? I still wanted to believe it. What the actual fuck? Did I... Did she just say that? Oh, y'all, this is so... Oh, I'm sorry for cursing. This is so fucking disturbing. She said, fine, about the sexual stuff? You mean when this man was sexually abusing your daughter and taking photographs of it? Y'all, I don't know. Oh. And you see this guy, he like, I'll, I'll play it back for you. He like cocked his head. He had a visceral reaction to that too. What the fuck is wrong with this lady? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to curse so much. Whatever. This video is like demonetized to shit anyway. Uh, so like, who, what am I pretending? But I'm sorry. I know y'all aren't here to like watch emotional reactions, but like what the actual fuck? That he had done anything equal to her. I'm like, what if he did this stuff fine? But what if she's still missing out there? What if somebody took her? I still wanted to believe in his... I he had that reaction and he caught himself. He looked away. Woo, y'all. I could never be an interviewer, an interrogator. Like, to me, it has to be one of the most fascinating jobs in the world. And yet, you got to have a poker face. You got to, and, you know, whatever ice cold blood flowing through your veins. I, I believed him. I believed his whole story. So I was just like, I, I kept repeating that part. I was like, what if, what if she did get dropped off? What if she got abducted? What if she's missing? Um, but that was me assuming that you guys had the wrong guy. I wanted to think he was a good guy still, but clearly he's not. After everything you guys have told me and have shown me, I know he's the worst person on this face of the we earth know that right now. now. We know he's a piece of shit now. You no. Know? But you didn't know that then. I didn't. Then you all... This is pride and ego up, which is so smart of this guy because... It is not how he's feeling and what he's thinking. And if he's worried that she's picking up on any bit of that, this is how they got uh, Chris Watts to confess. It was the pride and ego up technique. Chris, you're a good guy. If you're protecting Shanann and like, boom, he broke. Well, the, you know, polygraph results and uh, the dad coming in, but then he broke. Offered a guy the police suspected, suspected of kidnapping, abducting, assisting the disappearance. Well, from the lawyer. And then we don't have to round table that. We went back to you. what you just said is the sex stuff is fine. It's not That's fine. Look, I know every relationship is different. And I know everybody's family is different. I won't ask. But going on, you going back on. Has he expressed interest in, I'll use the word weird, I'm not going to shame anybody for what they, they like, different sexual 
pleasures, different sexual experiences, different kinks that involve things we weren't comfortable with. The only thing he's ever expressed to me was like anal. Okay. Um, he had an anal kink and like butts. Okay. But that was something I was never comfortable with or doing. And I let him know that, but like, that's something. something. So. I'm, good. I'm glad you protected your freaking anus from him, but not your precious only child daughter. But thank God your anus is fine. Woof. Worried about that. You guys slept in the same bed together. Steve was a big portion of your life at one point. Steph was a big portion of your life at one point. And this is not me coming at you as a person or a bad person because shit happens in the past. In the past, the past, we can't change the past. Has he ever expressed to you? Never. Has he ever made comments? These statements about did you feel different? No. Okay. When you guys slept in the same bed together, middle, did you ever wake up and find them cuddling? Did you ever wake up and find them closer than you thought they should be? They would, they would snuggle. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, we all snuggle. I didn't think that that was that problem. So if you guys are sleeping in the same bed, she's in the center. You've woken up and they're snuggling. They under the same blanket. They're not under the same blanket. No. But just like she's got her own blanket. She's screaming for what? Mm. How would it snuggling to you? Because to me, snuggling, spooning, big spoon, little spoon. He would lay down like this, and she would be right here in his in in the nook. Okay. Um. How do you guys sleep? You guys sleep clothed, unclothed? I sleep clothed. clothed. Yeah. Shirt, pants, pajama sets. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, I sleep in like my everyday clothes. Okay. Uh, on pajamas or baggy t-shirts and shorts. Okay. And Stefan would sleep uh, with his t-shirt or boxers, sometimes with his pants on, but he didn't have pajamas. Okay, so they would snuggle, sometimes him being in his boxers. He would wake up and she'd be in the nook of his arm or essentially in a cuddling position. And you never found that weird? No. Okay. Again, you and I may find things different. Why? And I don't want you to look back on it because now you know you victimized her for a long time, right? Under your roof. With you home, most likely, because you said you're always home. You just got this job. You're living off disability. This is definitely not pride and ego up. She's, he's nailing her down. I know the Kiss City Police Department has showed you pictures. I know they've verbally explained you some pictures. I can tell you that today, you're still downloading his Google Drives. You're still going through his social medias, his cloud-based servers, and everything else. And we can now piece back her victimization in your house under your care to 2020. I believe you've gone far as far back as any person. So when I ask, they woke up cuddling. Did you find things suspicious? Did you have an open relationship? Did he talk to you? Has he made inappropriate statements? It's almost like cheating, right? Like, have you ever cheated on? Okay. Somebody can only cheat on somebody for so long until they fuck up or until something comes out or somebody says something, right? So we go back to 2020. We're looking at a minimum of three and a half years. Three and a half years where I'm sure you guys are sexually active. Yes. <laughs> so for three and a half years under your care in your house, not only is he being sexually active with you <laughs> and having sexual relationship. <laughs> and I know it's an emotional thing and I know it sucks to hear. <laughs> But where I'm coming from is it seems like something that you can't hide forever. You guys live in a small space, close quarters. You sleep in the same bed. You guys all talk. You guys all share things. You're an observant person for the most part, I assume. Outside of taking medications and going to sleep, it seems very difficult. A lot of grown-ass adults can't hide an affair with somebody who doesn't live with them, yeah. let alone somebody who does live with them. So at a certain point, I do believe you became aware of what was going on. No. And when I say that, it doesn't mean you're in trouble. It doesn't change. 
I know, but... But I do believe that a reasonable person, I consider you a reasonable person, right? You think you're a reasonable person? Yeah. Would be aware that under her roof, sexual relations... The videos, the text messages, the images, they are all documented forever. This has been an ongoing thing. And at her age, I think she probably thought they were in a relationship. She probably thought they were in love because he should her male attention, right? She just started liking boys, right? She just got a crush. Up until then, her crush. At the same time, you guys are sleeping in the same bed together. You guys are all cohabitating. She's not sleeping in her room. But you felt the need to establish a rule that they couldn't sleep in the same room. But when you establish that rule, for three years, she's already been dating in possession. Whether that's legal or not. I had no idea. So I truthfully believe, and this is my belief, this is that I'm not speaking for other detectives, not speaking for the sheriff's office, the state police department, or any other agency I've said. This is Kevin's belief. I believe that you became aware of your sexual relationship. I think at a certain point throughout this relationship, you became aware of it. And for whatever reason, your reasons are your reasons, whether it was discussed that it would stop, whether it was discussed how it would go, that you feel some sense of guilt. A lot of the news statements you've given kind of, again, my opinion only, I don't speak for anybody else, whether it's in this room or out of this room, bother me. It seems like some of your emotion up until this room, I think some of the emotion in this room is sincere. I think a lot of it's because I'm being an asshole. I'm telling you things you don't want to hear that shouldn't be said out loud. But when you talk to the news, when you talk to deputies, it feels, based on my experience in this job, that it's not sincere. I feel like some of your sadness is not real sadness. I feel like when you gave the interview with Fox 35, it was not sincere. Oh my God. Looking at that video one time, I didn't feel like your cries were sincere. And I'm not saying that because you're a bad person. I feel like sometimes people struggle to show real emotion when they're aware of what the truth is. So it has to be fake. This is for the past, let's say, five years, right? But her going missing, her disappearance, if you have knowledge of how it happened, where it happened, and inclination, that emotion is not going to feel sincere because you're already aware of what happened. I would... It's almost because of lying knew, If I knew... Sorry, breaking really fast. Wow, okay. I feel like the public is probably feeling so vindicated because all of these things that he's saying, everybody was clamoring about in comments and posts about this case. Just, wow, I don't know, alpha dude energy, like calling it as he sees it in real time. And did you see at, at like early on when he started calling her on it, she cocked her head like that very similar to the way that he cocked his head when she said that insane statement early on that I'm not going to repeat. Um, yeah, and I would agree. Like, I think it's weird because when I kind of try to feel into people's energy in these exchanges, in these rooms, which, by the way, this room is, like, nice for an interrogation room. Like, it doesn't look like death. So I don't know if there's, like, nicer rooms that people are allowed to be in. It feels like there's so much adrenaline that it's hard to really have big emotional expressions in that case, right? Like, your body is so in fight or flight. You see it in her legs. She's discharging energy. She's, like, bouncing really quickly. I think the stroking of her legs is almost to keep her... Uh, from disassociating that is a gesture that can be really helpful in keeping people in their bodies the wiping the hard wiping of the eyes and the mouth almost feels like the subco subconscious gesture of like not wanting to see the images that are being evoked and not wanting to speak of it is the sense that I get 
But it's hard to, when you have that much adrenaline coursing through your veins, it's very, very difficult to cry. Like there's a certain amount of relaxation and release that happens when you cry. And it's just not always possible. Like speaking from experience, being on stage and stuff like that, it's not always possible when you have that much adrenaline and cortisol coursing through your body. So I agree he's spot on in this assessment. And I agree that there was always some kind of like fake transfer performance about her way like even in the interview that she gave to the news that he's referencing like this kind of slack jawed deer in headlights like I don't know what's going on and honestly I have no way to psychoanalyze this but honestly I feel like it's a really good um sort of outward manifestation of someone who was very like denial denial see no evil hear no evil speak no evil I don't want to know anything about it that kind of like you know yeah so well anything I promise you I would tell you like I am willing to take a lie detector test whatever the fuck you want but I don't know anything he's never mentioned anything I've never seen any signs I tried watching her like a hawk. I thought I was doing a good job, but I wasn't. I was oblivious to this every four years. Minimum. That's just how fat, that far back the clown goes. <laughs> and I, I find it hard to believe for me that you were so worried about how many pills she took at night, but not where she slept or what relationship she was. His interest in her. I thought we were all safe. I thought we could. Less than that. He hadn't shown me anything so far. Like, everything seems fine. Like, he seems... Like, he treated her like... Like he treats you? In his mind? It's so fucking disgusting. So now he's in jail because of what we found on his phone. Not because somebody came forward and reported that he... Oh, She's not old enough to consent. She's not old enough to have a thought process to even want anything that was happening to her. It's abuse. Oh. So he's in jail for that. But something caused what Right? We sort of murder. Because we can call it a murder. She didn't die naturally. She didn't overdose. She didn't have a heart attack. We circled murder on Monday. Something had to cause that. He's been having unrestricted sexual activity for a long time. He's getting what he wants from her, probably from you, and who knows whoever else, right? So it's not like he woke up or went to bed Sunday and he was like, you know what? I'm done with this, but I'm going to kill her. Something happened. People don't just wake up and like, you know what? They leave people. They break up with people. But usually things cause people to snap. Now what? And you know what? and I'm in trouble or I feel like I'm going to or him being now we can go even worse she's pregnant that's what questions last night led me to believe when we started talking about her period I was told that her and her friend and granted I'm a male never had a period but that somebody found it weird that they were no longer in the same cycle. Could be different because she's a teenage girl. Could be that she missed her period. Have you ever found a pregnancy test at home that wasn't yours? I have two underneath the kitchen, the bathroom sink, but I haven't seen if they're still there or not. Okay. But you haven't seen any used ones in the trash? No. Their relationship hasn't changed? Mm, no. Okay. So what do you think happened Sunday, other than him killing her? What do you think made him snap? I don't know. Theories, I, I, I keep hearing Tell me your theories, because here's the deal. We don't go home until she's found. No, I know, I know. So what are your theories? <sighs> what I've heard is... I freaking love this guy. Do y'all feel the same way? Like, oof. Love this guy. What if 
what if she upset him and threatened to tell me and say that she was going to tell me and he needed to shut that down? That's the only thing. Uh, even the way she says that, y'all, and this is more like statement analysis, but and he needed to shut it down, like, she still sounds more sympathetic towards Stefan than she sounds towards her baby girl. Like, this case haunts me. I'm sure it haunts all of you because I have a little baby girl. She's two and a half. And that girl, I mean, I know most parents feel this way, but, like, I've always wanted a little girl and I babysat a lot when I lived in New York City and most of the time it was girls for some reason like 90% of the kids that I babysat was just girls and I just remember thinking like how much fun it is you know for a mom to have a daughter and I don't know like everything is so fun like everything from like the outfits to the stuff that she's into I mean she's got she's really friggin rambunctious too I call her feral sometimes because she's like got a lot of freaking energy like boy energy um but you know she likes bows in her hair too and she'll play with my hair and I don't know she's just she's petite and just unmistakably girl and I love my husband and whatever but like even if it was just me and her like I would have a really freaking good life, you know, because um, that's awesome. Like being a mom with a daughter, like that's so much fun. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm making sense, but I guess I'm trying to put myself into her shoes, like being a single mom, her baby daddy's out in whatever, some other state. She never sees him. And I knew a lot of that. My friends growing up, their moms were single moms. And I don't know, like it's, I don't know. I'm sure boys are great, and I know boy moms are very uh, protective of their boys and very happy to have their boys, but, like, dude, nothing beats, like, being a mom and having a girl. Like, what is wrong with you that you didn't, like, bond in that way, that you weren't stoked to have this, like, sweet, intelligent, awesome girl as your daughter? Like, you know, living in Florida, like, I think probably not that far from Disney and stuff. Like, that's a good freaking life, you know? I don't know. What do you think? I believe Stop letting them increase your rates. I used to let them raise my car insurance every year until I found this. Oh, You don't want to believe you killed her. I want to believe she's still alive and that she got kidnapped, but that doesn't seem like that's the well, case. Not at all. Yeah. I know. I know my brain just wants to believe something else. I just want to believe she's still alive and she's out there. <laughs> This is more transfer, you know, and it works very well for her defense mechanism of denial. It's like, no, no, no. I think some of the motion could be very genuine. Um, she's distressed, whether it's distress for her or distress for Maddie. It's hard to say. No, he, he acted so normal that day. He was like, I'm so impressed. We got out of the house so early. Like she didn't. She made great time. We had so much time to go to McDonald's, but she didn't want to. His story was so funny. Like, every detail 
tell him so believable. <laughs> he's just been lying this whole time. Like, he's... What about that thing in the car? What do you offer him a word? Did you disclose anything to you there that made you feel like, oh fuck, you need to work? No. He acted, he kept, he kept, like, he kept acting like he didn't know what was happening. And I'm like, don't you see forensics? Don't you see they took your phone? Like, something's happening. Like, I think they're going to pin this on you. And I'm like, in my head, I'm going, they have the wrong guy. Like, they're, they're just honing in on the last person who saw her. But no, you guys do more. You never said, what did you do? I've never asked him any of that. I still, even even up until when we got here to the police station, I, I, I was just, I was convinced that he hadn't done anything to her at all. Because of him or because of not wanting to believe she's deceased? Because of him. Because I, I thought he was a good guy. So up until this morning, you still think that it's not? No, 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 no. We're up, talking about the other day. Up until, up until. When we took him. Yes, I forgot what the that was. So we're still going to do his phone, his drive, his told you, all his socials. We're going to date back to 2020. Based on the videos, it appears that was the start of the victimization. Okay, are you going to find anything in his phone with you? No. I don't know about anything. We've never done anything. Has there ever been a request? For the two of you to participate in sexual activity with him. No. Regardless of you saying no or yes. No, he's never asked that. Okay. If we find pictures like that, is that going to surprise you? So if I'm in his Google Drive, if I have a sex crimes detective, a computer person look at his phone, huh. and they tell me, hey, Kevin, I found a picture engaged in sexual activity or borderline sexual activity. Is that going to surprise you? Yes, because that doesn't exist. Okay. At any time during the course. Y'all see how direct she can be when she wants to be? How not confused, not deer in headlights, not mouth agape? Of course your relationship is he expressed that he's ever had sex with a child. No. Not Not a child. But when he told me when he was in high school, he graduated high school like later, like older than 18. Okay. He dated somebody younger than 18. I think she was 15. Um, but he, I don't know how old he was, 19, 20. But he was an older kid in high school. Um, he graduated late. Um, but he had a really young girlfriend. Her name was Kendall. Um, and I thought that was weird. I was like, that's a little too young. He goes, no, it's fine. We were in high school. Everything was normal. Her, her parents... Uh, love me. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but where's your freaking culpability, dude? Like, you can't make it like, oh, I'm a victim and oh, this, oh, that. You're literally talking about a red flag right now. And the whole time she's been saying, like, basically, no red flags, no red flags, no, and starts breaking down about how convincing he was about the alibi, about Maddie and the morning and his story and all his details were straight. This, my dude, is a red flag. And not only that, I bet this is pink compared to some of the red flags you saw. I bet. But that's the only one. Have you ever gone through his phone? Okay. <laughs> if you had to, knowing Stefan, knowing where he lives, knowing where he goes, how he conducts his life, give me your top five. Because I know you, you've had to have thought about it. If you haven't thought about it, that's another weird thing I got. Since Monday, right? We told you on Wednesday that we think he did it. Yeah. So from Wednesday till today, it's about 48 hours. Give me your top five places you think are possibilities based on knowing him, based on knowing his path of travel. Where do you think? It doesn't have to be based on evidence. It's just in your gut. Give me your top five places where you think he in this area doesn't have to be this area no i know where you want. i'm saying in this area i have no idea orlando kissing no idea where he could have taken her but 
his trip to Northport is weird as fuck. I feel like in Northport, he knows more people. He has more friends. There could be a place and somewhere there he could have stashed her. I, you guys said he went into a, a storage unit. That would be another place to look. But um, there's plenty of woods around his house. Around that exit is is kind of secluded. Like when you say his house, you mean his parents' house? His parents' house, yeah. I think, sorry if you hear the cat here, our little farm cat, Leah. Um, I think automatically the detective's BS meter went off because she basically started with saying, well, it's not this and it's not that. And a real innocent parent would be rattling off. I mean, I'd be rattling off like two dozen places stream of consciousness just he likes to go here and here and here and here he's always hanging out around here he said his path was blah 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 that's kind of weird so i would check out this and this and this and this like they would have a couple dozen suggestions for me within a minute or two of asking you've been there have you seen the property yeah i've been there before do they have the land or is it in like a neighborhood? So it's not a neighborhood because they don't have HOA. You just buy the plot of land and build it. Um, they don't have many neighbors. Okay. Um, or last I saw, I think there was a neighbor building right next door, but I don't know if they're done yet. Um, Dude, this affect is so weird. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's something on the spectrum or something, but like to suddenly slip into like, giving them a full casual explanation of their neighborhood and her tone is kind of like I find it interesting like weird I just feel like he had more there would have been more spots more spots in, in Northport for her to be dumped because from what you guys have told me, he went to St. Cloud, he went to 192. Could you guys tell where he turned on the night on any of these roads? It's just that he was on the main road. Did you see how he just let her cook for a minute? He just stared at her while she stewed. I didn't think he ever, like, even knew where St. Cloud was because we've never driven down that way ever. Yeah, you live in Kissimmee, right? Yeah, I know, but to me, he's never had a reason to ever drive down to St. Cloud, like, ever. There's no store or anything he goes to down there. Everything is in Kissimmee, or... Y'all, I don't know. It's tiresome when people pretend to be dumb, and, I like, that's all I can figure this lady's doing. Like... I didn't even know he was aware of a neighboring town right next to us. No, but he's never been to that town before, so how could he, he possibly know it existed? Like, my dude. And this tells me, like, she's been enabled to be this aloof, this um, playing dumb that... The Greg Hartley says the organism does what made the organism successful, and I think she's been able to get away with this defense mechanism her entire life. Or they know by the mall. Florida mall? Yeah. Florida mall? Yeah, by Florida. I sent, I sent the last detective like three spots. I, I could have recalled him telling me he, he, he wanted to visit. Um, Monday, uh, when he left the house in the afternoon and got the flat tire, he had mentioned a, a few of those shops, so I, I sent them over to you guys. Um, there's honestly no way I can think of. We've never gone to the only wooded area that we've ever gone together would be 
Shingle Creek Regional Park. Um, did y'all see her purse her lips before she did that? She went almost like she didn't want to say it. And I don't believe Maddie was found in the area that she's referencing, but she was found in a wooded area, or at least there were bushes, like shrubs around. Where the Pioneer Village is? Um, that whole trail there, we, we used to, we had scooters, and he had like a, like a electric skateboard kind of thing. We would, we would all cruise, like we would all cruise the creek, uh, explore. We've taken a canoe up that creek before. Um, then the Kissimmee Trail, there's a trail that runs right behind my house that goes, starts right behind my house and goes all the way to that bridge on John Young Parkway that says Kissimmee on it. That whole trail, we've done that as well. <sighs> that's the only places I could think that like he may have gone because that's where I know I've gone with him before. But anywhere else, I, I have no idea. So our ERT teams go really see your spots to It's just a group of people who search areas. It doesn't have to be wooded, can be wooded, can be swampy. They've been out for three days. They're going to be out all weekend. They will eventually, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's in 2026. Found. Okay. I don't think you want that to take too long. Right, I'm sure you'd like to have a funeral. I'm sure you'd like to have some kind of memorial service. <laughs> the last thing you want is for us to call you in a year and say, hey, we found remains. We don't know. <laughs> okay. That may not be something you thought about until just now, but I can tell you being someone who investigates homicide, that is something that everybody has to come think about eventually. If you can think of anything that would assist us in making that happen to you today versus two years from now, regardless of why you know or how you know, we need it. No, I know. If I knew anything, I would tell you right now. I promise. I want her back so bad. <laughs> yeah, this display seemed like a true display of emotion um and i actually and you probably felt it too i know that in part because i felt for her i felt sympathetic towards her and that's that's our instincts telling us you know what's true and what's false and another thing i just realized is when he was being tough on her you know, if she was innocent, there would be this, like, fully innocent. There would be this indignation and this fighting back. And, like, who the hell are you to tell me? You know, like, they say that, uh, especially Deception Detective talks about this a lot on his channel, that innocent callers on 911 calls are very rude, actually. And, um... It's because they're more aware of the urgency of the situation and needing to get it resolved. And it's annoying when you're in an emergency situation and you're having someone ask you dumb or questions that you feel like you've already answered them. They're having to repeat it back to you. Like the dispatcher doesn't always hear them correctly. And they're feeling like their house is on fire, you know? like metaphorically or whatever the situation is and so they're very rude they care a lot more about getting the emergency resolved than they care about being polite so the same is true when innocent people are accused of awful things and a lot of them will not care about courtesy or kindness they'll be like what the hell are you talking about I knew, or you're blaming me. My daughter is gone right now. My daughter is missing. And you're trying to make me feel bad for the abuse that was inflicted on her that I had no idea about. 
Like, but there's none of that. There's no, and she does get direct at points and like a little bit, I don't know, cocky, like when she cocks her head at him. So I feel like she for sure has the capability of doing that and also because she's human. Um, but she doesn't, she doesn't defend herself like that. Uh, Cause I think she understands the part she played in it, which I don't think she knows any of the details actually about the day of, but it's it's very easy for her to not know. This is part of her and Stefan's dynamic is he does the awful things, she looks the other way, and out of sight, out of mind, doesn't know about it. So I fully believe that, I know, she, I believe she knew about the abuse. I don't know if she knew about him recording it. I suspect she did. Or suspects, I suspect that, let's just say, I don't think she ever wanted to look on his phone or computer because she was afraid of she, what she might find. So she suspected that as much. Um, I don't know if she knows. I mean, my suspicion from the very beginning was like Maddie was pregnant. That would make it a very clear motive for Stefan very clear like why now motive in in that so yeah okay i'll stop blathering What has your communication been like with his father since this? I've, I've, cut, cut, I've limited contact over the last two days because I just, I know too much and I don't, I don't want to tell them anything. You don't want to tell them what we've told you or you don't want to tell them what you know? No, I don't want to tell them what you guys have told me. I can't, I can't, I don't want to share any, I, it's, it's so difficult because I've known them for just as long as I've known Stefan. They've act they feel like absolute shit right now. I know that they kind of got into a fight because Chris are Are you sure we know our son? Are you sure we know our son? I don't think we know him at all. The mom was defending him, but now, now with everything, with the evidence on the phone coming out, they know. <sighs> they know he's a piece of shit. <laughs> we talked to his dad, and his dad knows as much as you know. He yeah. knows his son's he knows his son's a murderer. <laughs> he's talked to us. He's been very open with wanting to help in any way he can. Whether that's technological, whether that's verbal. Yeah, he, he even had, I was with him when he turned in his knife to you guys. You remember he had a knife on him and gave it to you guys. I thought that was... Have you talked to Chris about Stefan being a lawyer? Yeah. Where? <sighs> I think when you guys showed me the... the, the... The photos. So he showed you photos of Stefan. No. The first thought you had was to ask his father if he should get a lawyer? No. I saw a picture. I didn't see the. I didn't know she was getting until yesterday. I saw the picture of the oral sex happening. And I, I knew that that was true, right? That's evidence. That's for real. That's fucking happening. But I kept thinking, they're going, I don't know why I kept, I, I can't tell you why my brain kept thinking, no, he didn't kill her. But not that he didn't kill her, but she's still missing. She's still out there. She was taken. Yes, he's done this to her. 
and that's not okay. But I swore she was still, I felt in my body she was still alive. She was still out there. I told Chris to get him a lawyer because I felt like you guys were chasing the wrong person. But you weren't. You're not. We showed you a picture. But the picture you saw, she was giving a blowjob to a grown ass man. And you told his dad to get him a lawyer. Missing, right? Now you. But then you just thought she was missing. And we were showing you our investigative lead. The low job is not consensual. Whether she wants to do it or not, that is not consensual. And you prioritized him again. You prioritized him by offering him or telling his dad to get him a lawyer. Y'all, I feel like I'm fucking watching Jerry Springer or something. Like, this is unreal to me. Unreal. Not... What the fuck did he do? I, hey, we need to figure out what happened. No, let's protect Stefan. I was in shock. No, that's not shock. That is your natural instinct to protect Stefan. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if that's naturally how you react, that's fine. But that goes into what I've been telling you this whole conversation is I don't believe a lot of the things you're saying. And I don't believe a lot of the things you say you weren't aware of. And that is because you've now shown me twice that your first reaction, no matter what you were told or shown, missing and we're seizing the cell phone, and we're showing you pictures of her giving him a blowjob, your first reaction is to protect Stefan. So now, ordered by Stefan, you're aware of this, you were shown pictures of this, you were shown pictures of her body in his car with a seatbelt on, right? We have played it out for you. Now, now you're in a stage where he's in jail, you know she's passed away, and now you can feel emotion, right? Until that point, when you were shown that she was deceased, your continued first reaction is to protect this guy. I, I, you just said, I only saw a picture of him, whatever your verbiage was, I say blowjob, of his penis in her mouth, and your first reaction was, fuck. Oh my victimized no she's being abused no it's stefan needs a lawyer who the fuck cares if we think he killed her he's i don't know why i don't know why i said but that's the problem you don't know why so the reaction in your mind is you're continuously protecting this guy so why do i sit here and believe that you don't because right now you know stefan killed her you know stefan's been do you know without her body, can he be charged with murder? I don't know. Exactly. So you don't know what we can do. Do I think we can charge him with murder? It's not up to me. Should he be charged with murder? Yes. Please. Does your role in her life lead this to happen? I'll be honest. Yes. I know. Since she was a child, since her victimization started, it occurred under your roof and you acted like it didn't exist. And knowing the victimization, knowing the victimization, knowing how ongoing it is, knowing that you saw a picture of it, not just us telling you, not me and him saying, hey, listen, he's being, I think they had a bad relationship. They showed you a fucking picture of it and you still protected him. So how am I supposed to not think that the thought process in your mind is until she's found, Stefan can't be charged with murder? Because we both now know I don't... that you don't want him to be charged with murder because you want him to have a lawyer. No, I don't. That was, the blow job. that was oh, then. Oh, he can't be charged with murder. That was then. Everything that you guys have shown me since then and have shown me that he's so alive. So we have to show you a picture time. of her dead in the car for you to finally not take his side? Okay, here's the thing. I think this is true. I, everything, the, her reactions so far in this interview about the topics of Maddie being essayed, raped, versus Maddie being murdered. It feels like she's drawing a line in the sand. It's I'm laughing because of, at, like out of sheer absurdity, like what friggin' planet am I on? But it's like in her mind, you can hear the justifications that as long as he's not killing Maddie, it's okay. I don't know what 
what had to have happened in your life to make you think that, that it's okay for a grown man that you brought into your house to be doing that to your baby girl starting at around age eight. Like even when Maddie died, she was young, very young, 13. Not take his side. Do you not see where I'm coming from? Like, I'm not trying to be a no, here, no, but it no. makes absolutely no sense that you were never to his step. I don't know. Where does your mind go? Stefan. Okay, day two. I am picking up where I left off and I'm trying to hold my tongue so that we can get through as much of this as possible. I went back just a tiny bit, but here we go. So I'm going to show you a picture of her dead in the car for you to finally not take his side? Do you not see where I'm coming from? Like, I'm not trying to be no. here, no, but it makes absolutely no sense that you were never to his step. I don't know. Where does your mind go? Stefan. There, there should have been no doubt in your mind when they showed you that picture of what he was doing to you that you had any care in the world other than I want that motherfucker to die. Whether you believe in the death penalty or not, he protected him. So now we're talking about her disappearance and where her body is. Why do I believe that you're still not protecting him? Because you say so? Because you can't explain why you protect him. You can't explain what is inside of you that makes you protect Stefan. And you may never be able to explain it. But eventually, we're going to have to figure it out because you haven't convinced me that you're still not protecting Stefan. I got all these people out here searching. I haven't seen my own kid in days because I'm looking out. If you believe that I can't go home and see my kid is because you're protecting I can't go home you're protecting people sitting in the woods just waiting for me to tell them where to go. But I can't because I think you're is in trouble. I don't care about him. I want him to go to jail. I want the worst thing possible to happen to him in jail. I know what happens to predators in jail. Like, I'm ready for that. Like, please, I don't give a fuck about him. I'm not protecting him. But you knew he was a predator when you show, got shown the picture. And then you text his dad that he needs a lawyer. Uh, so if y'all watch Behavior Channel, you'll know that they'll talk about uh, looking, I forget what they, it's something like looking for approval. You saw the way she said, whatever it was, like, I'm okay with the worst thing happening to him, whatever. And she let it land on the detective. And then she looked to her right, um, our left, at the other detective. If you are really 1,000% convicted in what you're saying, you don't need to look and see how did that land? Did they did they believe that? You don't give an F, dude, right? You hope that he invoked was the words I was told. What? You hope that he didn't talk to us. He needs a lawyer. No. All over a picture. You didn't care. You didn't care then. Oh, whether sex isn't important to you. Important to you. No. That wasn't anything close. I knew, I knew what I saw was He was terrible. a predator right then and there. That's the day you found out he was a predator. Yeah. Yes. And after you found out he was a predator, did you not say he needed a lawyer? I did. So why today, Friday at almost 3 o'clock, five days into the disappearance, two days since you probably found out, or one day since you found out she was murdered, do I believe you that you're not telling me where he went or that he didn't disclose to you where she was or what caused this to happen? Is listen, I know you know I've been do whatever or listen this fucking happened how do i believe that that didn't happen when everything you've shown me is protect stefan now once have you shown priority in this conversation in this investigation you're coming here looking for her you reported her missing trouble for not doing that but outside of you reporting her missing 
And I may be wrong. I haven't been involved in all aspects of it, but you have not shown me one bit that you prioritized her over him. And that sucks. Not because we're working our asses off for your family, not because we have people out there sweating their asses off for your family, but because I feel like all I care about is your care is to make sure Stefan doesn't get held fucking accountable. Well, I don't care anymore. Anymore? Because we're being assholes, because I'm not being nice. No. But up until Thursday, it was okay that she gave him a blowjob. No big deal. Get a lawyer. No, it wasn't. It wasn't okay. I was honestly, I saw that and I was in shock. And I don't know why my first reaction was to tell him to get a lawyer, but I saw that and I was in shock and I was just like, I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to believe. <sighs> um, this psychological gesture of almost like wanting to wipe her memory away. It's interesting, like looking at this, like actors will look at physical behavior like this and how it tells a certain story. Anyway, uh, also, is anyone else getting the vibes? She suddenly starts to feel very, very young and like she's sinking into this couch and she was doing a little fig leaf across her lap, like protecting her. I wonder if, if Jen was essayed when she was young. Um, not saying that that is a justification at all but I'm just trying to understand how a mother could find a way to think that abuse like that isn't that bad. That as long as her daughter's not murdered, it's okay. Um, I feel like you kind of have to be groomed into that belief, but maybe you don't have to be essayed maybe she was groomed into it by Stefan as well, but she's a grown woman. She's a mother. And we as parents have to find a way to overcome our shortcomings in order to keep our children safe and protected and cared for. It's easy to believe it now. We showed you pictures of it. You can't deny it anymore. You, the sex was okay. The murder's not. At least, you, no, at least that no, makes sense. No, that's okay. I want to know what it is. And not because I think you're a bad parent. Actually, I think you're a bad parent. Dead or alive, she's missing. Her body is out there. Her body needs to be recovered so she can have a proper burial, a proper funeral. She needs to be laid to rest. Your family needs to be able to mourn her. And we need that information. That is life. That is not life of the law. That's not life of the sheriff's office. That is common decency that is what she deserves that is what you deserve that is what your family deserves but the longer that happens the longer it takes us to find her the less likely that's going to be for you guys and i'm sorry if i'm wrong i truly am but deep down you haven't shown me that i am i don't know what i need to, to show you prioritize her over steven think step in. think of places he would have dumped her body I think am. of places he went Things you've talked about, things you've discussed, whether it's this week, last week, don't put it in your mind that he's a victimizer. Or don't put it in your mind that I'm being a dick. What can I think about to find out where Stefan put it? Right. Being the solution. You know more about where he goes, what he's doing, or what he would do than you want to realize. That's natural. Not because I'm telling you, but because that's natural. I have best friends. I know more about them than I think I know about them. I just need to sit down and think about it. So I need you to sit down and think about it. Whether you need a minute when we're not in this room, whether you want to do it with this in this room, we need to leave here with an idea of where we can go look for That is one thing we can agree on. I've sent you the list of the stores that he may have stopped at and didn't stop at. The only outdoorsy places I can think of that we've ever gone to that he would know about would be Shingle Creek or Kissimmee Trail. I don't know if he knows where Lake Toho is, but that could be another option. Because you think it's a wooded area? Because it's a place you guys have talked about together? Because it's a wooded area with a lake, with gators? Like, we haven't discussed, we haven't discussed anything. I, this topic, I never, I never asked him if directly I never thought he 
he could have. I always assumed the best in him. But I just asked him directly. I didn't even suspect. I didn't even suspect not until you guys showed me that picture upstairs. Where's your Y'all, this is so freaking off. It's so off. Like, she... Oh, how is she acting like she's the victim? Like, melting onto the couch like a child who's being fussed at and she can't do anything about it and doesn't rally and show any kind of urgency or energy until the detective calls out that she's not doing that and basically she's not going to be able to leave their custody until she does that and that she gets faux kind of sadness around she didn't suspect it so she's the victim meanwhile she's like suggesting maybe to go look for her daughter's body in a lake where there's alligators Earth to Jen, come back, Jen. We need you back from planet friggin' denial. We ne you're needed here on Earth. I don't know. I'm just thinking of if I name places, it's gonna be wooded areas that I can think of. But he hasn't told me anything. Like he has not told me, or we haven't discussed. So him going to 192 that day, all you know was, was that he went to 192. He said he, he wanted to visit House Car Rules. That, show, that was one of the, he named three stores, and that's one store I can remember him listing on that list. House Car Rules? Yeah. I don't okay. know we'll get your phone real quick. House Car Rules. What kind of store is that? I don't know if that's like a... Yeah, I don't know. Video game or car game or board top game store. But that's on 192. Close to one, I think, okay. I think close to one age somewhere. And he said he wanted to go to three stores. Yeah. But he did tell me that he did. I just don't remember which one. Are there woods in that area that you can go to 492? No, not, not where these stores are, I have no idea. Other than... Do you know anything, Jen? You came up with wooded areas that you know of. Yeah. You came up with wooded areas that you think you could dump a body in. Because I've been there with him, yeah. I need to know wooded areas where he travels, right? You're, you're saying we've been there, so she'd be there. So that tells me she's not there. It tells me it's a waste of the search. Okay. Because when I put 90 plus people there, that's all day, right? We got to coordinate that. We got to put them there. So we need fruitful searches. Yeah. So I need likely places that you think, and I need places you think based on the conversations with him, not because you can picture in your mind that there's trees there. Okay. There's no conversation I can think of. Okay. Where he's okay. Named interest in being anywhere near woods or it being along his way. You said he had a flat tire. Tell me about the flat tire you got. Um. So he said he got a flat tire. Um. Hey, check this out. So I stopped buying random lotto tickets and started doing this My instead. Has like this. You've <laughs> I'm not sure what when he got a flat tire, but he said it was he got a flat tire and then came directly home and he got home around 2:40. So flat tire, he said it. He was driving down 192 and just popped and shut it and fell apart. Um, and he pulled over into a plaza and changed the tire for the first time in a very long time and said he hurt himself doing it. Uh, the frame of the car, something came down on his finger. All his lies, I don't care, but I want to know what you questioned him about. Why was he there? What was he doing? There's no way you're the most trusting woman in the world. You just don't ask clarifying questions. I know no relationship I've ever been in is that trusting. He just tells you he's gone at three in the morning, getting a fucking wild wild. You're like, yeah, whatever, that. Same thing with this. It's like, oh, I got a flat tire. I was here. Why is he in these places? Do you not question him? Why were you on 192? Why did you dip out at three in the morning with my car? I didn't know he this, did that. This is two times he went to 192. He went to 192 the day she disappeared, right? He's roaming, looking for her south of where she went missing because supposedly she went missing.
the 192 is cell or where that is. And I, I it's not very likely that that's the route she went on foot or abducted and that him driving around is somehow going to locate her. And he did, and he did tell, I did question that. I was like, when I asked him where he searched and he said 182, I said, why? That's not where she, where she would be. And he didn't give me a clear answer. And, and I don't know why I didn't push it. I just thought he was being stupid and oblivious because I don't, I don't see him as the smartest man. Like I don't, I, I let him do what he does, but I don't trust a lot of his, is it his word judgment? I'm not sure, but I just don't trust that he makes the smartest decisions sometimes. Like he likes to act like the smartest man in the room, but I don't think he is. Do what he does. Meaning? I'm sorry. You said, I let him do what he does. Yeah. So. If he wants to just get up and go to the store, I'll ask where you're going. But I won't stop him. But just let him go on his way. Um, just let, let him do what he wants to do. What do you think happened? Monday night. You know she's deceased. We showed you pictures that she's deceased. We know that she was probably deceased Sunday into Monday. So we won't see her Monday morning. I still We're don't want to believe she's deceased. I know, you, I know you showed me pictures, but for like... For the purpose of this conversation, I need you to believe it because I need you to figure it out. I need you to, I need you to tell me what you think happened to her. I think he killed her that night. How? I don't know. Could it be possible that he drugged her? Could, could he have choked her? I, I just don't know. How you kill someone and don't leave a mess or don't leave evidence or I mean was there a mess? Was there evidence? I haven't gone upstairs. I don't know what that what what you guys have I barely went into the house today, so I don't know what I need to know what you think happened. I think he Yeah, because she's like digging for evidence, like digging for what they know, like another red flag. He killed her. How? You mentioned drug trade, you mentioned other things. Explain your reasoning behind those assumptions and we'll move forward day by day. Stefan did talk a lot about drugs in the statement he gave to the police uh, before he was arrested. I think there might be an inter uh, interview with him post arrest. I'll look into that. I thought I saw a thumbnail but I've been trying to avoid this to give y'all like a clean take, but I wondered about the drugging because of how many drugs mentions he dropped in that interview. So he had access to Benzos and I think Lunesta. What are those? I'm not familiar with that. Benzodiazepines are anxiety medications which relax you and can make you sleepy. Okay. Uh, Why does she talk like a child? And Lunesta, I think, is a sleeping medication. Like for insomnia. So I don't know if it's possible he, he gave her something and she was drugged. In, in those photos that you showed me where you're saying she's dead, maybe she was drugged. But if she is dead, and it was done upstairs, I could just only imagine that he choked her. I don't know how else you would kill someone and not leave a mess. How do you think he got her out? I have no idea because roommates come in and out of the house at any given point in the morning and we don't know their schedules. They can come in at any time. You guys showed me, you guys showed me a picture, I think of him or her in the car at 7.30 in the morning. My roommate left the house. She's the one who leaves the earliest. She left at 7.45. So, like, what if he had waited a little longer? She would she would have caught him with, a like, carrying a body out of the house. How did he do that without being caught or seen? That's what I don't understand. Because, like, did you guys check and see if any of my neighbors had ring cameras? Any? Nothing? I don't know what data we've got in front of them, but at this point, I need to know what you think happened to me. I don't need you to ask us what we found. Yeah. Okay. What we found has happened. I need you to come up in your words, in your mind, what do you think happened that night into Monday? Because we do not know. 
I know if you murder her on Sunday, on Monday. All we know is that when you went to bed, they went to bed together, and she's no longer here. So I need to know what you think happened to her, how he got her out of the house, where he went, how he got her in the car, where she thought, and what happened. I think she was killed Sunday night, Sunday night into Monday morning. I'm thinking he carried her out of the house. I don't know how he didn't get caught by any of my roommates or no one heard. You're saying he drove around all around town. I'm not sure where he could have gone. And then him coming home and leaving, coming home and leaving, what do you think? Knowing that he killed her. If That's you suspicious make, if you, if as fuck. It is suspicious as fuck. If you're writing a book, what do you write? This, let's say this is a fiction novel, right? You're now aware that he killed her. So now you can piece together a story of what happened, right? You don't know the story because you're not him. And you tell me he hasn't told you. So it's, it's, it's not real. So you were telling me what you think. Yeah. Right? You know he killed her. You know he drove out of there Monday morning. You know he discarded her backpack in the trash dumpster. You know he discarded her laptop in one shoe, right? So all of her property was discarded to look like She's gone. That way he doesn't have evidence with her. They leave. You've been told that they drove around Orange County and Osceola County, wherever it was. You've pieced that together throughout the week. All right? He's told you where, at least in his version of where he was and what he was doing. Right? But then you have all these suspicious times of when he's left and come back and he's gone here and gone there. So what do you think he was doing on all these suspicious times? He's roaming 192. What do you think? Knowing what you know now, now we can play. You know she's dead. You know that we've given you information. What do you think, knowing what you know, he was doing at 192? He was doing here. He was doing here. He was doing in Northport. What do you think? So him leaving early in the morning and driving around aimlessly somewhere. I feel like he stashed the body at that time when he came back and then left again. But see, it's daytime. Like, how could you move a body or move something in daytime and not be seen? But like, I feel like he went back to to check, to make sure he did a job or to move the body again. I don't know. If you were suddenly just dropped into this interview just now and you had no context and you just watched the last five seconds, you would think potentially that you're watching the neighbor of a murder victim give a statement on seeing a guy, her neighbor, that she doesn't know very well and she vaguely knows the murder victim just by seeing her in passing a young girl day to day whatever, when they're getting out of their car, they're going to the mailbox, blah, blah, blah. You would not think that this mother is missing her 13-year-old daughter, who may or may not be dead, is probably dead, who was essayed by her boyfriend from this point, she thinks at least for the last four years, the last few years, horrible things, many, many images what would you think to go along the detective's thought experiment lines? Like, what would you think if you saw this the last 10 seconds here? But him leaving the house multiple times without his cell phone is sketchy as fuck. It's so suspicious. Which is an intentional act. It's not accidental. So that can play into what you think happened. Yeah. Do you think me on the dresser? It was intentional. Her cell records and her cell data from her cell phone show it is not common for her to leave her phone home. It is common for her to go to school with her. 
you know, teenager leaves their phone at home, so they're, they're attached to it. She's um, left her phone home multiple times. The cell data shows that normally it goes with her, so that's intentional. You know it's intentional because he left his too. Yeah. Right? Whether it's an accident last Friday, this Monday, it was not an accident. So you think that he dumped her when he was driving around. You think that when he left, he went to check her body? Possibly. Okay. Why would you go back out to 182 without your cell phone? I would disagree. If he goes out to 192, do you think he may have checked where he dropped her or dumped her? He comes home, he tells you they're just roaming around aimlessly. Right? So that's twice on 192 in one day? Because he went to look at the house of cards bullshit or whatever it is, yeah. and then he went to do the roaming to look for her on this random highway that he never goes to. Okay. Okay. We go into the next day and the next day. Think of the suspicious things he's done. Tell me what you think he's doing. Him grabbing my phone and trying to log into his emails, that seems kind of suspicious. What was he trying to see? What was he trying to do? The thing is, when he had my cell phone, now that I think back to it, he had something wrapped around it, so the phone was under a blanket, and he was like this. Oh. I tried looking at the screen. I want You know why? He was looking at your daughter getting raped on your phone. You fucking loser. Point and I could see an email. But and that was the cell phone you took me today, or you gave us today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you, can you, like, can you guys explain what happened yesterday? Before um, that, I need you to continue going over it. Yeah. Uh, where do we, where are we at? Sorry, I'm gonna rewind that a little. I didn't hear the detective's response. Can you guys explain what happened yesterday? Before um, that, I need you to continue going with. Yeah. Uh, yeah part of it. Where do we, where are we at? Uh, suspicious utilization oh. of the phone. Yeah. Of the phone. Yeah. Okay, speaking of suspicious, I feel like she gives them, like, a... A breadcrumb and then she's like but what do you have obviously not as direct as that but it feels like that's the cat and mouse game that she's playing and it's like how about do you care about this investigation do you care to be helpful and productive and contribute to it because like otherwise just ask for your friggin lawyer dude but so many people stay in this room, even when they're guilty, because it's more important to them to appear like they look innocent, especially in a situation like this where you're a freaking monster if you're not actually innocent. But yeah, like advising Stefan, Stefan via his dad to get a lawyer, like take your own advice, sis. Him disappearing multiple times. Him disappearing to Northport. What the hell is he doing? That is suspicious. I mean, now that I know that that's where he went, that is suspicious as all fuck. Why, why did he go to a storage unit facility? What was he grabbing? What was he trying to dispose of? Or what was he trying to hide in the, in the... That to me is suspicious. I want to say this is the first tiny little flare of anger that we've seen in over an hour of being interrogated about her daughter who's been essayed by her boyfriend for years sus the name of this interview is just jen soto gets interviewed sus af do you put more weight on that than 192 192 something happened in Northport. There would there'd be no reason he would take do you, do you understand what I was asking with that phrase? Putting weight on it? Like do you feel like it's more suspicious what he was doing in Northport versus 192? I don't know 
which one's I don't know which one is more suspicious to me. Okay. So I think I finally figured out the game that the detectives are playing with her is they are giving her an ability to dime on Stefan without directly diming on him. And what happens in these interrogation rooms is so it's so important for people to conserve a sense of identity. Like we saw Chris Watts confess because he was given the leeway to do that and still be a good person. So if she dimes on Stefan, since that seems to be more difficult for her to do than protecting her daughter, if she dimes on him, but it's through a way that's imaginary, especially because that's a defense mechanism of hers, like goes to fantasy, then yeah, like these detectives are just, you know, top, top tier. And I hope people who watch are giving them credit because I know that people were so pissed at Jen Soto and they were also by extension pissed at the Kiss Me police department feeling like they weren't active. I feel like these guys couldn't have done a better job of holding Jen's feet to the fire. They're bo they both... One ninety two seems to me like the easiest place he could have dumped her or like figured out where to put her. Unless she was in my trunk the whole time and he went to North Port. The trunk of your car? Yeah. Didn't you drive your car at some point? Did and you guys sit in your car at some point? I did. So that's what I'm saying, like I would probably smell something, but I didn't. So I'm just trying to think, I'm like, did he stash a body in North Port? I don't think so. He's probably hiding something or destroying something. So I guess 192 would probably be the most important right now. Also, you don't get to be a worried... Uh, the word that's coming to mind is like beleaguered mother. I don't even know if that's the right word, but like weary, put upon, just really going through it. And also casually be like, oh yeah, you know, he essayed her. That's not a big deal. She Obviously she didn't say it as directly as that, but all of her statements about it add up together to be... And the protest too late about, I know what they do to predators in jail, and I want all of that to happen to him. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so being in your trunk is oddly specific. Only reason I say that is because, from what you guys have told me, he went directly from the hotel to Northport. I don't think he made any stops anywhere in Kissimmee or anything first, and then went to Northport. All we know is what we can piece together through accessible cameras and data. So his, his movements, his driving patterns, his actions, we can only 100% say what they are if we're on camera. Okay. So we can say he went to Northport because his car was in Northport, but where he stopped, where he went in between, that cannot be factual for us if we don't have a camera. It can just be an assumption, which is why I want your assumption. Okay. You know him, I don't. Yeah. Um, I think we actually saw like a spike in uh, stress there. She kind of like did some either mouth grooming stuff or lip licking and it looks like she's struggling with dry mouth. She's tucking her hands right now. It could be her hands could be shaky or they could be cold. I know I don't know the mechanism behind this, but when you get really, really stressed or at least it's happened to me before like panic attacks and whatever like your hands, get so cold and clammy they can and I think it's because there's so much blood coursing through your vital organs as your like heart is pumping and trying to prepare you to run or fight if I fell asleep at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. At the hotel, what was that, Monday night? Tuesday night? Well,
was trying to think, like, could he have had the time to stop somewhere wherever he stopped her and then took her to North Park? I think he had time. Because he cleaned your car since it came back from North Park? Was he brought it to a car wash? Did he detail it? Paint somebody to come out? No. Because you, through your, we call it a fiction novel, you piece together what you think happened based on a suspicious activity and you ended with, you think he put her in your truck and brought her to North Park. Yeah. I know I asked you to make assumptions, but now I want to know why. Why is that how we finished this? What, what is in your mind leading you to believe that is the ending of the story? Because 192 seems like a really busy strip, and I can't think of anywhere immediately, like, other than going deep into St. Cloud, like, passing St. Cloud, like, going into Holopa or Harmony, that I could see some stashing the body somewhere around there. But Northport has so many wooded areas, and I feel like I don't know, you would be familiar with both areas. I just don't know him to ever drive down 182 super far down, like into St. Cloud. Wasn't she eventually found in St. Cloud? Or was that where her school was? If I were the detective, because she's so not trustworthy to me, and it feels like she's protecting Stefan with a certain type of vigor that makes me think that she's also worried she's going to be implicated somehow if Maddie's body is found somewhat still preserved and there's evidence preserved on her. That's not to say I think she did it. It's to say that I think she fears that something somehow might lead to her. So if I was the detective, I would go to the places that she flagged as not important and I would probably avoid Northport because she's been saying that like every other word for the last 10 minutes um but I've known him to drive around all around Northport um but see I don't want to say anything and like you guys down to Northport to do a search and nothing there. I'm just We're thinking, gonna go everywhere. You're searching wolves right now, which is not. Okay. I just I just wanna be like I know you guys are like looking from looking at me for the details, but I'm like, I don't wanna send you on a wild goose chase. You know him better than us. us, us. Dentists hate when you do this, but they can't stop you. This new one hundred you gotta really think. Yeah, I was picking up on that too. She seemed like a release came over her body because her body is so has been so jacked up in fight or flight and can't really maintain that much anymore. Greg Hartley talks that about that a lot, how you got to know as an interrogator how to bring them up to the point where they're not going to faint. Uh, you can't push them that far. And maybe it's just the lighting or whatever, but like, the color seems pretty drawn from her face and her body was like totally limp just now and she was like, you know, 
disassociating somewhere else, which I think is a skill that she has honed. The truth, I would tell you, I don't know anything. Jennifer, where do you think you took her? If I were him, and I had to stash a body, but I would never, I would never do this. My mind would say to go to Lake Toho. There's a lot of woods there, there's a lot of gators. Like I told you, it was going to come to a point where you were like Volusia County Sheriff's Office just found somebody the other day that's been missing for a long time. People get found. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's not quick. I'm hoping this situation is today, tomorrow, Sunday, but we will find her. What you need to think about is when we find her, is there an opportunity or a chance that we are going to prove that you did not assist us to your full capability in this investigation? And if that is true, you need to think about the consequences of that. Consequences of hindering a murder investigation or a capital sexual matter investigation could be punishable up to probably the same charges, the same time in jail. I know you, I know you know that I don't believe what you're saying. I know you know that I think you prioritize staffing. Do you prioritize jail? You see what I'm saying? Like if we come back and prove that you sat in this room and misled us, no. That you didn't lead us in the right direction, that you assisted, or you acknowledged, or you knew. You're going to get warning from jail. Okay. If I knew anything, I, I swear I would tell him. I don't know much about him. He hasn't mentioned. We haven't discussed this. I had no suspicion of anything. He did not tell you saw the fading facts that she did. If I knew anything, I swear. And then it became a little bit more audible and she sounded more confident or potentially truthful or less dishonest. And that's a Scott Rouse thing, the fading facts. Tell me any more details of where he went that day other than those shops that I had mentioned. I'm, I'm giving you my truth. Your truth? Subjective truth? Except by the time he would have got back from the tire, you were gone, right? Yeah. Is what you told us? Yeah. And then she was reported missing. Yeah. During that time. Yeah. No, yeah. And it never dawned on you to be like, damn, did he really change his tire? Let me check. No. Mm -hmm. He got home really late that evening, and I didn't even think of doing that. Uh -huh. This is part of our problem. You did so many things and you never questioned it. I didn't suspect him. How can we believe some of the stuff that you're telling us or believe that you don't know? I don't know how to say it. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm stupid and gullible and very trustworthy, but I didn't, I didn't think he'd be the type to do anything. I didn't doubt, I... But you knew he was vindictive, you described him as not trustworthy with his family. You described instances where you document where he was lying to his family, lying to you, lying to others. Lying to his family, yes, he, but you, lying you, to you me. You discussed that he wasn't that good of a person. You're the one Did y'all see that asymmetrical shoulder shrug a little while back? I forget what the behavior panel says about that. I wish I could remember.
I, I do believe it's some sort of that the asymmetry in it indicates some sort of incongruent behavior. Um, it's not the same as being like, what are you going to do with both of your shoulders? Like there's something kind of wonky about that asymmetry. You're not describing it in a positive light at all. So this trust, this, this caring, all this stuff makes no sense because you de Regardless of the victimization, describing him as a good person. He's stealing from his parents, right? But he never stole from me. You guys have no money, but all he's doing is ordering things, right? He's buying himself things. He's not, he's, you described him as a selfish thief. You even, you even called it a robbery, that he robbed his parents. So you, you're trusting this dude who just, that you're describing as untrustworthy. But I thought he was. What happened to her? Where did you pass that? I can't fathom that. I can't wrap my head around it. I think I only asked him if he took her to school when I when I called him and told him to come to the office. I asked him if you dropped her off at school, right? Because she never made it. And he said, Yeah. And I was like, She never made it. Where did you drop her off? Um you guys sat in your car Tuesday night when I was out there. I was out there at least four hours. Just you two in that car. Yeah. You can't tell me you guys did not have any conversations about this. There's no way. Other than, the other person than, other would have than, been questioning him. You were the last person with her. What the hell happened this morning? You never did that in that car. Thank you. Yeah, this lady knows something. Um, I don't know if I said this already, but I, I'm almost feeling like, I mean, it doesn't seem like they had a particularly large amount of money, but I wonder if she was profiting somehow off of the images that he was making with Maddie. And that led her to be an accomplice in it. And she didn't know the full extent of it, like if Maddie got pregnant or something. But maybe that is her guilt and guilty knowledge that she knew about the abuse that was happening. And she let it happen because she was getting money from his, dis his distribution of it. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think. Here's why you haven't been able to stay quit from drinking. Alcoholics Anonymous has less than a 10%. I remember being on my phone. He was on my phone for a little bit. I know I was medicated. And I was just zoning out. I wasn't thinking anything of anything. I... I Me. Just asking him that one time to me was if he took her to school that that was enough answer for me. I don't know. I I, I just wanted to think. Not think the worst. I guess I don't know. But I just didn't think he did anything. Now I know. But then I I didn't. I was still believing everything he was telling me. Juvenile robbery suspects utilize the excuse of, I was high on bars, I took Xanax, I was blacked out, right? Every juvenile robbery suspect you interviewed, I was, in, in your words, medicated, in their words, high, incapacitated, drunk. It's an excuse to avoid admitting what happened. When you say you're medicated, I can't think of an amount of medication that will numb you so bad to numb the fact that your that investigation is occurring right in front of your face when you're missing. So being medicated is just an excuse. Oh, that maybe that is something. If she was like a fentanyl addict. What do y'all think? If she was like addicted to dope or something? I don't know. Like, yeah, I just can't square it. I can't. 
to avoid answering why you didn't discuss with him what happened. It minimizes your guys' interaction by saying you were not fully coherent with the mm -hmm. person I know who can sit in a car and watch a bunch of detectives and crime scene investigators and everybody else search her house, seize her house, see and be so numb that that somehow is not ringing bells. He's not overcoming the power of this little medication. There's, there's no way. The human body will overcome that in a big situation. If you didn't take enough medication to numb you of the reality of what was occurring. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Unless you were fully incapacitated, there's no way you were so numb that everything he described to you, everything I described to you, was not in the forefront of your mind. You weren't numb. Just like these robbery kids weren't blacked out. They weren't high enough to not remember the robbery. They just don't want to talk about it. No, it just, it wasn't clicking. It didn't click to me. Like, you you guys telling me, like, it wasn't as hard as this and that. I I still believed every, the story he had told me, that when we were sitting in the car, I still fully believed everything he had told me. I didn't doubt him. I then why did you call it a story? You believed what he told you. Or did you believe it was a story? Pick one. I really thought you guys were going after the wrong guy. I'm like, they're wasting time. The, the, the real suspect is out there. She's being trafficked. That was my biggest fear is that she was being trafficked. I didn't think. Okay. So your little girl goes missing and you, the first thing you think is that she's being trafficked yet living under the same roof with your boyfriend, sleeping with her day after day, cuddling, sleeping in the same room together without you. And not, no kind of thought like that crossed your mind. My dude, how have you been able to, how have you been enabled to be such a bad liar in your life? This feels like maybe this whole family comes from a very denial, don't see, don't speak, don't hear kind of a culture. I think that she would actually be dead. But she thought enough to get a lawyer. I really thought you guys were going after the wrong guy. Did she look at the camera just now? I've, I've spotted her looking at the camera a couple of times during the interview. I haven't said it yet, but I, I never know if she's like looking at this detective over in our direction or if she's actually looking at the camera. Being trafficked. That was my biggest fear is that she was being trafficked. I didn't think that she would actually be dead. But she thought enough to get a lawyer. I really thought you guys were going after the wrong guy. At that point, from the jump, we've been trying to find her. That has been and will be our biggest priority. Tim getting arrested for victimizing her was an accident. We only discovered that she was a victim because we took his phone. And I'm like so happy that happened because if not, this would have continued to keep happening. Well, it wouldn't have because he killed her on Monday. Uh, I don't know she had the bowels. I don't How did you get here? You're driven here? I was driven here, but my dad followed behind. I think you guys said my car might be ready. I'll be able to verify that. Um, the invest, the, the invest, is this the deal? Yeah. Right, Stefan also is not been charged with murder. Right, just a sexual He's not battery. He is. He is not. Oh, okay. He's just been charged with sexual battery. I have a couple questions for you that are going to be on record. They're going to be official. I need you to answer truthfully, because if they determine that you did answer not truthfully, you can be held accountable for it. Make sense? Yeah. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that everything we talked about today in this interview is true and correct? Yes. Did you lie to me? Looks like at any time. Yeah. Okay. 
do you currently know or have you ever been aware of where your body has been since mother? Yeah. Did you have any were you aware at any time, whether it be the most recent instance or the first instance, organization sexually by Stephanie? Okay. At this time, you do not know where Stephanie went on 192? No. You do not know where he went in Northport? I do not. And you have at no time this So this part is a little tricky because the audio is slightly lagged um, and it doesn't exactly match up. I thought I saw her like break eye contact though with the you don't know where he went part. I'm gonna forgive me, rewind a little. And you do not know where Stefan went on 192? No. You do not know where he went in Northport? I do not. And you have at no time this week in any conversations with Stefan that you disclosed what he did. No. Okay. The story that we talked about of what at one point we discussed that she could potentially have been in the trunk on the way to Northport. Yeah. Is that information you, you know to be true or an assumption? An assumption. Okay. Do you have any questions for us before we go check on the problem in prior? We may not be able to answer everything, but if you have questions, we can see if we can't answer those questions. It's not your only opportunity. Your, your only opportunity phase was you saying you swear. Yeah. I mean, you're actually the only opportunity, you obviously have numerous detectives phone numbers, you have numerous agencies phone numbers, things like that. So realistically, there will be other options if you ask questions. I don't think I have questions right now. Okay. I don't want you to think I was purposely an asshole to you. No, I know. All We're right. doing your job. Like I told you, like the sheriffs have probably reached out. You've been in communication with numerous people here. Those are my opinions and my opinions only. They don't reflect Sheriff Nina, Chief of PD, Kyle, any other detectives who talk to you. All right. I personally don't know. All right. We will be here all weekend. We will be here all night. My only hope is that you truthfully did not lie to us. You truthfully don't know where she was. And that you truthfully did not know what was happening to her. <sighs> wow. Okay. Well, uh, some final thoughts here. Um, I think that, like I keep saying about Jen, I think that she has used denial successfully in her life very well. And um, I think that, you know, fight, flight, f uh, freeze, or flirt, I think that her defense mechanism in her life has consistently been to freeze and disassociate. And I think that's assisted her in being in denial as well as she is. Uh, that sometimes she like forced herself to, to disassociate and be in fantasy about things or pretend that she didn't know things that she did know. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know this to be true, but that seems like it would jive very well with someone who has a background of being essayed, um, you know, that they're able to disassociate while they're able to be in denial, they're able to bury certain memories and not uh, recollect them as a self-protection mechanism. So that could be an explanation for, I don't know, still... I don't know. I think it's hard, and y'all tell me if you do this too, it's hard to watch people without trying to understand where they're coming from. Um, I don't know if that's like still the actor in me that's always trying to understand why people do the things they do and not, obviously, not so that they're justified or vindicated, but... I 
guess it just comes from a deep curiosity about humans and why we behave the way we behave and all that stuff. But um, rest in peace to sweet Maddie. Oh, I wish she had a mom that would have protect her the way that she deserved to be protected. Uh, 13 is such a sweet age. It, you know, you're, you're gaining a little bit more freedom and doing fun things, but it's not quite as heavy and deep as, I don't know, 16, 17, 18, 19 can get. It's, I, to me, it was still, you know, one foot in carefree kid land, one foot in, you know, adolescent land. And, but this girl was so completely robbed of her innocence and I know she's in a better place now so thanks for watching uh please give me a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time